Today we're gonna make these really cool, really beast mode end grain maple cutting boards. Now end grain cutting boards are phenomenal because uh, just like a rope, wood fibers run lengthwise. So when you do end grain, it absorbs your knife and keeps it sharper longer. Uh, that is why these boards, something like this goes for a few hundred dollars, uh, something like this, maybe 150 bucks online. And this is only total $42 in wood. So if you're getting into woodworking and you want a quick way to start making money to fund your hobby, end grade cutting boards are the amazing way to do it. And you don't have to make these fancy patterns. Um, these just plain maple ones are very, very popular and they go for tons of cash. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to make them today. We're gonna head over to the miter saw and get started. All right, so for our big boy, um, I've calculated, I've got a seven inch wide board that'll give me three strips of two inches. We're looking for about 21 inches by um, 14 to 16 inches for our big boy. And then uh, same width, uh, about 10, 11 inches for our medium boy. Uh, that's gonna be three strips at 30 inches and two strips at 15. And one of my 30s is gonna be 31. So we're gonna chop this up. That's gonna give us plenty of wood. Uh, and like I said, it's only a few board feet of maple. So let's get this chopped up. We're gonna get strips cut at two inches wide uh, and then we're gonna start gluing up. God damn it. <laughs> uh. All right, so we're on to glue up number one. And we are gonna glue up our boards. We're gonna use a liberal amount of glue. And one of the reasons that you always cut extra when you're doing a cutting board, you don't know what you're gonna get into when you cut up a board. So you can see here after I cross cut this one, by the way, I, I used those new CMT blades on this that I did a couple videos ago. Look at that, just there's no burning anywhere on this. And if you're gonna test a saw blade, eight quarter maple is the one. That was just incredible. Sorry, I digress. Uh, we're gonna glue this up. So the reason you always cut extra is you never know what's gonna happen when you cut up boards. And you can see like this one, I have a big split on it. I've got a couple other with cracks. So on the cracked boards, I like to put those towards the outside of my glue up. Here's another one. And that's just in case we gotta lose something, you don't wanna have to lose it from the middle of your board. So let's glue these up, pull out every freaking clamp we got in the shop. Obviously what's best for this is parallel clamps or pipe clamps. Um, if you don't have those, you can probably use F-style clamps, no big deal. I'm gonna do a video on clamps coming up soon because there's just so many different options out there. So let's get these glued up. Uh, some people say type bond three because it's more water resistant. So uh, something to think about, let's get into it. All right, so we've got these out of the clamps now. It's time to re-flatten them. Uh, I'm gonna run them through the planer. I think that's one thing maybe you wanna think about when you're doing your first glue up, is it going to fit in your planer? Um, if not, sometimes if you're doing like a really big cutting board, you can do two separate pieces and then do a second glue up once you've kind of flattened those and you have less to deal with. One thing I'd recommend is if you didn't clean up your glue when uh, you were doing your glue up, you're gonna wanna get that off now before you run it through the planer because you don't want like unevenness as it goes through. Glue dries so hard that it'll be like, it'll act like a wedge. So I'll just use a block plane. And actually my last video was how to tune up and set up your block plane. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. It's up here in the corner. I'm gonna take the glue off. We're gonna run through the planer and then we're gonna cross cut them. And when you cross cut them, that is going to be the thickness of your cutting board. Remember, you're gonna to need to sand it down and flatten it again in the next step. So give yourself a little bit extra from your desired thickness, you know, maybe a 16th of an inch or something. And we're gonna cross cut them into strips and then we'll get into our next glue up. So uh, let's get into flatten these and uh, we'll check back in at the next glue up.
All right, things I am impressed with. Uh, stop block, this thing was like 30 pounds. I was bumping up against it, thing did not budge. I need a new crosscut sled and I was watching Tamar's new crosscut sled video this morning. That thing is ridiculously cool. Things I'm not impressed with, my planer. I don't know what was going on there, but I was like, it felt like I was trying to push an elephant through in the eye hole of a needle. So I got to take a look at my planner and see what was going on there. It's glue up time, and this is where alignment gets important. You want to make sure your clamps are clean. Uh, probably throw some blue tape down on them. I didn't on the last glue up, which are silly. These are awesomely brand new clamps, and uh, they're awesome, but I just had to peel a bunch of glue off. So um, glue up's going to matter because what happens next is you need to sand it and sanding end grain sucks and not like dust collection the good kind of suck like it sucks it takes a long time i was super impressed with the cmt crosscut blade there's almost no burning on this maple is notorious for that so that was super cool glue this up we're gonna use type on three because it is waterproof and we are gonna put this together um i would go slow as you tighten your clamps do each one a little bit get a mallet um, if anything starts to rise, you know, give it a nice whack, gentlemen. So, let's get into it. All right, so we're out of clamps, and now it's time for the fun part of angry and cutting boards, sanding and getting it flat. But pretty easy uh, as long as you follow a procedure and that is using pencil. You wanna pencil your whole top and you don't go over areas where the pencil is gone. Keep reapplying your pencil and when it starts to come off evenly, then you know you are flat. Uh, thanks to Ben Wobey, who last time when he was visiting gave me a new belt sander that he had, uh, which is super sweet, I've never used it before. But we're gonna get into flattening these. Don't be afraid of your pencil. Keep adding pencil and make sure you keep moving, especially if you're using a belt sander. This can really take off material quickly. So uh, make sure you're always moving, you know, overlap your strokes by 50%. And when the pencil's gone, stop uh, and move to parts where you still have pencil. Uh, and keep reapplying your pencil each time that you go through and you should be good. You could also flatten it with like a number 62 low angle jack plane. It's gonna be a workout, but it's doable or a drum sander if you have one. Uh, little known trick too, uh, if you look up architectural millworks in your area, a lot of times they will have a pretty small fee for taking things and running them through their wide belt sander. And I've done that before. And sometimes I'll take like, you know, 10 cutting boards and 60 bucks to run them and flatten them through the wide belt sander. So something you could think of. Um, after that, we're gonna trim them to size and we'll check back in when it's time to add the accoutrements to these things. So uh, let's get sand. Jonathan's three second reviews. Don't get a Craftsman belt sander. We already let the smoke out in three minutes. We're gonna go to the random orbital. So we've got everything cleaned up. I made one mistake there on the table saw. I was trying to match how much I took off on the little board and I measured from the wrong side. So uh, it's gonna be a little off for you OCD folks, but it doesn't bother me. These are going to my kitchen. It's time to finish these up. These are both gonna be prep boards for me. I have a carving board. It was that 3D cutting board that I made, uh, which has a juice groove in it. If you wanna see that video, it's right here. You can see how I cut the juice groove. When you see these for sale, these maple ones, they usually don't have a juice groove. Um, I'm not sure why, but I, I don't want one because they're gonna be prep boards for me, like I said. We are gonna put handles in the side. We're gonna round over the corners. And then the big one, I want to be reversible so I can flip it over. So I'm not putting feet on that. Um, the giant ones like this, if they're flat, they stick to your counter. They're not going anywhere. Uh, we're gonna put feet on the little one because that's gonna be moving around my kitchen. The big one is too heavy to like 
be easily movable so it's gonna sit next to my knife block, kind of where I do my food prep. We're gonna be using this cool astro-coated ball nose bit from Bits Bits. And on the little one, the handles will be more towards the bottom. On the big one, I'm gonna try and hit the middle. Uh, and I'm gonna just create a simple jig by clamping just two blocks of even size, and then I'll just butt my router up against on both sides. Super easy way to do those handles. And then we're gonna put on some Cat's Moses goo. And if you don't use Cat's Moses goo for cutting boards, you're blowing it. Uh, it's super cheap and easy to make. And it's a great thing when you gift these or sell these, you wanna make sure that you give your client or your, your loved one something to season their cutting board with to continue to keep it because these cutting boards dry out and if you don't continue to put some sort of mineral oil finish on them, uh, they are gonna warp big time over time, they're gonna dry out, they're gonna split. Uh, end grain cutting boards are something that really need to be maintained every couple months. So uh, I think what they say is whenever it looks dry, you put stuff on. So make sure you give whoever you give these to uh, a jar of it. And you can even put your logo and your phone number on it so that way when their friends say, nice, cool cutting board, where'd you get it? They can be like, oh, I got it from this guy. Uh, let's get into finishing these. These came out incredible. I think this one weighs like 25 pounds. I can't wait to use these. And how about my new kitchen? I just moved into a new house. So we've got a lot of household projects coming up, uh, building some furniture for my new place. I'm super excited about that. A uh, couple things, don't use a number two pencil. Use like a, a number five mechanical pencil when you're sanding, it sucks. And if you use that big thick graphite like I was using earlier, you're gonna get spots where you gotta sand forever to try and get that graphite out. It breaks apart and sort of gets into the end grain, so you gotta be pretty careful about that. Uh, you probably don't even need to sand past 150. I found it didn't even make a difference on this hard maple. So don't beat yourself up about sanding. It comes out incredible. As you saw in the montage, mine looks super smooth. I didn't go past 150. guys. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, we are shipping daily out of the Cat's Moses store. Head on over, get a stop block, a dovetail jig, or a t-shirt. Stay safe in the shop, guys. Have a wonderful day.